Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to share with you the five reasons why I decided to go with the Canon 24-70 2.8 over the 28-70 F2. Now, let me start off by saying both of these lenses are incredible. They are of very high quality and produce amazing images. Um, but acquiring new, acquiring new gear and I recently switched over to the RF mount, so I have to get new lenses. And this means that I get to build from the ground up again. And just like before in the years past, I've been shooting for 10 years now. So acquiring gear is not anything new, but my workflow is and my needs sometimes change. So I'm sharing my reasons with you only so that you can learn how to decide which one is better for you because for some of you, the 2.0 is the right choice for you. So let's start off with reason number one, and this is 2.0 versus 2.8. I have been shooting for the last six years with, solely with prime lenses. And as you probably know, prime lenses have wider apertures. And I was really worried that I wouldn't have enough light. I don't really care about the depth of field. It was more about am I opening up my aperture wider than 2.8? So to figure this out, I went into my Lightroom catalog and just looked through some of my images and saw what I was actually using. And I was really surprised by this. I was shooting at f2.8 up to f8 consistently. Uh, I rarely dropped down to anything below 2.8. If I did, I think it might have been a mistake. So for me, this checked off the first box. I can live with a 2.8. I don't need the 2.0. Reason number two is the weight. I couldn't believe the difference between these two lenses. I know having wider apertures means you have more glass and you have a bigger lens, but the 2.8 is two pounds and the 2.0 is three pounds. So that's an additional pound that I would have to carry around. I personally, don't use tripods. I, sh I move around a lot. I like having the freedom of getting different angles and stuff. And I shoot a lot run and gun. I shoot video handheld. I also shoot on a gimbal from time to time. So adding an extra pound on top of a gimbal just seemed like a, you know, a lot of pain on my shoulders and my back. So saving that pound was a huge upside for me. And you know, if you are a tripod user, then this might not be a big deal. Use the weight, like the weight you will never feel. But for me and the way that I shoot, saving that amount of weight was a big upside for me. So let's move into reason number three, image stabilization. Finally, this lens has image stabilization. 10 years ago, my first lens that I really wanted to buy was the, the 24 to 70 2.8. And at the time I was shooting video, I was shooting in small spaces where I couldn't have a tripod. I had to do handheld. There was just a lot of things going on. I was backstage shooting bands and stuff. And the 2.8, 24 to 70 did not have image stabilization and it didn't in the second version. I was so bummed. So what I had to do is make another compromise, make another decision based on my needs, same thing. I've been doing this for so long. It's always looking at what I actually do, looking at my needs and then making a decision based on that. So I ended up getting the 24 to 105 F4. So I lost a whole stop of light. And to be honest, it didn't make a difference. I made up for it with just buying the prime lens. And then when I needed a certain focal length, I could have more light that way. But this isn't always an option. I'm just saying that was my story and I have a similar story. So now I am shooting handheld. I do have an R5, which has in-body image stabilization, but I'm also shooting on a EOS R, which does not. So to not have jittery footage and be able to shoot handheld, having IS is huge for me. So another strong reason for me to get the 2.8. Reason number four is the focal length range. Now, one of my favorite focal lengths is 24 millimeters. I go to that 
probably 50% of the time. I love the way that portraits look. I love the way that it makes bodies look. I'm shooting action. I'm able to shoot wide and capture a lot and maybe crop in if I have to, but, or fill the frame and get that like limb distortion. It, I'm a huge fan of 24 millimeter focal length. Now, since I'm getting away from using primes and having to switch lenses all the time, I know I could get a 15 to 35 and have 24 in that. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to change my lens all the time. So I decided that 24 to 70 was the right length for me. I know exactly where to stand when I'm at 24. I know what I'm going to see without even having my camera up to my face. It's just that ingrained in me and like the back of my hand. So this was kind of a no brainer. The 24 millimeter is something that I love and I needed. So reason number four, focal length range. And the final reason, and this is just the icing on the top, uh, the price. Because I don't, because there are a lot of reasons for me not to get it, I couldn't justify spending the extra $700. The price difference between these two lenses is huge. And I can now put that $700 into some other gear or into something that I need in my life. I think having the best, the most expensive doesn't always make for the best choice. So, so for me, I just look at that as a win. Um, I do shoot professionally, so I know that I will make up the money. It's not really about the money, but it is kind of, you know, these things are investments and they are supposed to last for five to seven years, sometimes 10 years, and you do get the money back over time. So to wrap this up, I just wanna say, every lens that is made, it could be the right lens for you. You just have to go through and take a realistic look at what it is that you're doing with the lens, what are the downsides, what are you gonna miss out on, you know, stop thinking about will the quality hinder my work i think i've seen i've seen people create incredible work with iphones i've seen people make amazing things with kit lenses it's not about the equipment the reason i invest in pro gear is it's just a little bit more durable it's made to be used every single day it's made to go through different weather conditions. You can get rain on it, you can get water in it, it won't break down. That reliability is one of the big factors. And you know, if you break down the cost of the lens over five to 10 years, it isn't actually that much. I know you have to buy a bunch of other things on top of that one lens. So, so I hope this video helped you out in your next decision on your lens or your camera body. I had to do the same exact thing picking my R5 over the R6. I might make a video on that, I'm not sure yet, but it's the same process for every single gear acquisition. You look at your needs and then you look at what it does. And if it does all the right things for you, that's the one for you. So if you like photography and you like photography based videos, please hit the subscribe button for more videos. And if you like saving money, <laughs> please, hit the like button. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.